it's time to look at adjectives that is how we describe things in Italian. So welcome to another lesson of our Italian for Beginners series. I'm Manu Venditti, I'm your teacher and I'm going to help you kind of get this thing right. So adjectives, what are they? Well, these are words that describe things. In the previous lesson, I told you that knowing the gender of a noun is essential because depending on the gender of the noun, everything else around it that refers back to that noun has to change to reflect the gender of that word. And so today we're looking at how adjectives, the qualities, the things that we say to describe things, how they are affected by the gender of the noun. So an adjective is a fancy word for a quality. You know, things like red, blue, big, interesting, uh, tall, uh, tired, they're all adjectives because they're describing something. Like I said, they reflect the gender of the noun they are altering, they, ref they are describing. And usually in Italian, that's a little difference between Italian and English, the adjective follows the noun that it's describing. So if you're saying something like the blue table in Italian, that will be the table blue. It will take you a little bit to get used to saying it correctly, but you, you'll get there. So in Italian, pizza buona, that means good pizza, pizza buona. Panino buono, that's a good sandwich. So what's happening here? We're talking about pizza. Pizza is feminine, so we take the word for good, which is buon something. We use the feminine version of that word, which means good, so buona. Now with panino, panino is a masculine word because it's, it ends with O, so you know it's masculine, so you know it's panino. If you want to describe the panino as being good, you have to make the masculine version of good, which is buono. So you might be asking me, Manu, you said that things don't change gender. Nouns don't change gender. So a pizza is a thing. It will always be feminine. A panino is a thing. It will always be masculine. Uh, a bottle, uh, looking at a bottle, it's always feminine. It will not change. A monitor that I've got in front of me, it's always masculine and so on. What changes is the adjectives. The adjectives, because they can describe things that are both either masculine or feminine. And so an adjective can change and will change, whereas a noun will not change. So make sure that you get the difference between those two. Finally, cane, dog, buono, which means well-behaved. So it's a good dog. So cane buono. Now, these are not sentences. These are just like a noun and an adjective. Good dog, <laughs> you know, cane buono. But then we have cane, masculine word, so buono means good, it's in the masculine form. So here are some adjectives that you can use to kind of get started describing things. Buono means good, so the feminine is buona. Bello means beautiful, feminine, bella. Rosso means red, something that is color red, so rosso, rossa for feminine. So let's try and describe this ragazzo. Ragazzo is a guy, a boy, it could be, you know, just any, any age kind of thing. Um, so ragazzo, how would you describe this ragazzo? Ragazzo, is he, is he good, well behaved? Ragazzo, buono. Is he handsome? Ragazzo, bello. Perfetto. Libro. Again, libro buono, good book. I'll tell you, in Italian, we actually often use bello to describe the quality of something creative. So we might say libro bello, a good book, but yeah. Torta, cake. How would you describe the torta? Buona, buona, because you gotta make buon feminine, so buona. Casa, let's make the casa red, let's make it red, color red. Casa rossa, casa rossa, casa bella, or whatever, in the feminine. Perfetto. So. Well, let's look at adjective endings. As you notice that we took buon and then the final sound changed into some OOA basically. So we're going to have the O ending for adjectives when they take the masculine form. And then we're going to have the A ending for adjectives that take the feminine form. Unfortunately, not all adjectives can end in OOA because many will end in E, just like we saw with nouns. You don't decide, I don't decide. That's just how the word is. So I'm gonna give you some examples. So here are some examples of adjectives that end in O. We, we already saw bello for beautiful, rosso for red, buono for good, and nero for black. 
So what, what does it mean? So these words, these are the official Italian words to say those adjectives. If you looked up on a dictionary, how do I say black? It would say nero. The dictionary will always give you the masculine word, the masculine version. And then if you need the feminine, you change it to nera to describe something feminine that is black. Okay. So that's how it works. So if you need the feminine adjective, again, the dictionary will give you the masculine, but the feminine version will be bella for beautiful, rossa for red, buona for good, and nera for black. But now there are adjectives that end in E, meaning that if you look them up on a dictionary, the answer that you see already ends in an E. So what that means is that that word that ends in E, that adjective that ends in E, can in most cases be applied to both genders. Not always, but most of the times. So let's look at a, at a few of them. Interessante. That's the word for interesting. So if you looked up, how do I say interesting in Italian? I would say interessante. It ends with E. That means that you can use interessante without changing it. It will never become interessanto or interessanta for feminine. It's just interessante and it applies to both genders. Triste, sad. Triste. It applies to both genders. Verde, green. Grande, you probably heard this word, big. Gentile, kind, gentile. Felice, felice, happy. So these adjectives, as they are, they describe any singular word that is either masculine or feminine, and it doesn't matter, they will not change. Quindi interessante, triste, felice, verde, uh, try and remember these ones. So we got bambino, bambino, how could we describe this bambino? Bambino, felice, bambino, felice, felice didn't change because it's singular and bambino is singular, one child. Bambino is masculine, felice, if we were to analyze what, what, is, what gender is felice, well, we guess it's masculine because it's describing a masculine noun. Un bambino felice. If this child was cute and happy, bambino bello e felice. Bambino bello e felice. Child, beautiful and happy. Cane. Let's make the, 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 the dog a little sad. Cane triste. Cane triste. Cane bello ma triste. Cane bello ma triste. Beautiful dog, but sad. Cane bello ma triste. Ragazza. She's interesting. Ragazza interessante. Ragazza interessante. What if she's pretty and interesting? Ragazza bella e interessante. Yeah, you're getting this? That's fantastic, right? Panino. Panino. Uh, so th this sandwich is big. Panino Grande. What if it's a good sandwich and it's big as well? Panino buono e grande. Panino buono e grande. Perfetto. So when it comes to tips for learning adjectives, now adjectives, just like nouns, they're just words. So you can always learn new words. You can, you can use one of those many apps that exist that are only good basically to learn vocabulary. So let's use them. So a good way to learn new adjectives is that when you're learning them, you match them up with a, a noun that you're familiar with. So let's say I kind of, we have a tendency to use ragazzo ragazza because that's clearly male and female, but it doesn't help your brain understand that gender in Italian for nouns has nothing to do with human gender. And so, you know, you could pick libro, as a standard masculine word and casa as a standard feminine word or whatever. Pick a clearly masculine word that ends with O and a clearly feminine so that when you're learning an adjective, it will, it will be there to kind of help you remember how to play with that adjective. So let's say you're learning the adjective veloce, which means fast. Well, veloce, see, it ends with E. You may have a hard time remembering that it doesn't become veloce or veloce then kind of learning with, uh, with a noun so that you kind of have a little set phrase in your head that kind of stays there. And the other thing is be flexible because these adjectives are flexible. They do change. Just remember, nouns don't change. Adjectives change to reflect whatever noun they're describing. Also, notice patterns because I will teach you some, maybe not in this series, but we definitely have videos that cover little tricks to kind of guess the gender of a word and... Uh, so start paying attention to patterns. You know, there will be adjectives, for example, that end in oso in Italian, and you will slowly realize, oh, these are the same words that in English end with os, like rigorous, rigoroso. And since they end with oso, they have a feminine 
with the aversion, so rigorosa for rigorous for female. So he has a few little um, tricks. If an adjective ends in tile in English, then probably in Italian it will be tile. It will be a word that ends with tile. These are tricks to help you kind of make up the word. So if you're thinking, I want to say futile, then if it ends in tile in English, probably it will end in tile in Italian, it will be futile. And it'll be an adjective that can be used for masculine and feminine because it ends in e in Italian. Uh, words that end with ent in English tend to end with ente in Italian. There are again adjectives that can apply to both genders, like intelligente, intelligente, intelligent, un ragazzo intelligente, una ragazza intelligente. Also, like I said, it could be oso or osa, generoso, generosa. So this one, you can see that has a masculine and feminine version. And then we have the ending ante, which often is the similar in English. It's ant, like elegante, elegant, elegante, which would apply to both genders. So we are done for today. I will see you tomorrow. Ciao.